In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily calculate the Macaulay duration, the modified duration, and the effective duration all in Excel. Now let's dive in with an example bond that I've set up here. Now this is a bond that has 40 years to maturity and it's semi-annual. And we can tell that it's semi-annual because in this column of time here, I have two cash flows coming every year and basically they're spaced out every six months. We're going to be receiving cash flows of $35, so these are our bond payments, and we come up with that value by taking the face value of the loan, the $1,000 that it'll pay back at the end, the notional principle, right, multiplied by the coupon rate of 7%, so that would give us $70 per year, but because it's semi-annual, we're taking it in uh, two payments each year, so we cut it in half, and we get $35 bucks every six months, and then right at the end, we get our normal $35 payment plus the face value of $1,000. Now that we have that, we need to come up with the present value of each of these cash flows, which is just going to be equal to the cash flow divided by 1 plus... And then we're going to be taking the uh, yield to maturity, which is the interest rate in the market that we can expect for loans of comparable risk. And then because it's semi-annual, we're only going to be accruing half this interest rate um, at each point in time. So we really have to divide it by two. And then we're going to take all that to the exponent of the time multiplied by two. And again, both of these twos are just here because this is semi-annual. If it was an annual loan, you wouldn't have to do that. And there we go. So the present value of this $35 due in six months is uh, $33.98. Now let's control C on our keyboards to copy that. And then we will paste formulas with a right click. Oh, sorry. One thing I need to do is I need to lock in this rate right here, which is cell I3. So I'll do that hitting F4 on my keyboard. Now control C and I'm going to right click and paste formulas. There we go. So we've got all of our present value of our cash flows. Now we could just hit equal sum here and we'll sum up this entire column like that. And we find that this bond is actually worth $1,035.10. And this makes sense that it's worth more than $1,000 because when the coupon rate exceeds the yield to maturity that's demanded in the market for that uh, uh, bond's risk, then we know that this should be sold at a premium which would exceed its face value of $1,000. And that's what we're seeing right here. Now, to calculate the Macaulay duration, we need to find out which, um, what each of these cash flows contributes to the total weight of this, uh, this total amount. So it's basically going to be a weighted average. So for each of these, we can take the present value of its cash flow and divide by this total value of the entire loan. Let's hit F4 to lock that in place. And then we can just con copy that with Control-C and paste the formulas. And so there we see that um, each of these has a decreasing weight towards the total contribution of the present value. And that's because they're uh, decreasing in value over time as they get discounted by more and more as they go into the future. But we see most of this weight is in this final cash flow because we receive that notional principle. Okay, now we'll take the time times the weight, which is just going to be equal to this value in this column, multiplied by the actual weight, and we'll do control C and we'll paste this all the way down. So basically, we're just taking a weighted average of the times and the weights. And then when we sum all these up, so we'll do equals sum, we will find that this is actually our Macaulay duration, which is a weighted average of all of our weights and the times associated with them. So we'll set our Macaulay duration equal to that value. This is good for estimating the bond's average time to maturity in terms of years and understanding the expected holding period for a bond investment. Now, let's calculate modified duration. And after we calculate it, I'll get into a bit of what it means and what we can take away from it. I've pasted the formula here, which is just uh, modified duration equals Macaulay duration divided by 1 plus the yield to maturity divided by N, where N is the number of payments in a year. So let's just write this formula out, which is going to be equal to the Macaulay duration divided by 1 plus, and then we'll take our yield to maturity up here of 6%, and we will divide by 2 because this is a semi-annual paying bond, paying 2 interest payments per year, and we come up with a modified duration of 3.462. Uh, and what this is telling us is that we, if we make a simplification, um, we can assume that, let's say, if this yield to maturity decreases by 1%, 
we expect the present value of this loan to increase by 3.462%. And so it tells us basically how sensitive is our bond's price to changes in interest rates. Um, if we wanted to get even more accurate, we'd have to include convexity, but that goes beyond the scope of this video. Now let's calculate effective duration. I have included the formula for effective duration down here at the bottom left. And what this is telling us is that effective duration is equal to the price when interest rates decrease minus the price when interest rates increase divided by two times the total price change times the original price. Now let's, let's break that down. So let's just start off with the initial yield to maturity of 6% right here. And then let's add to that based on this value right here. So we get 6.25%. Uh, and then let's change this so that we can subtract by that amount. And we should get 5.75%. Uh, and so we're going to price this in these three different scenarios. So we'll just use uh, equal to PV. And this is just an inbuilt Excel formula. The rate is going to be equal to this value here divided by two because it's a semi-annual bond. The number of periods is going to be equal to this four multiplied by two. I also uh, hit F4 to lock that in place. And so there's really eight periods of payments, right? Eight payments here. And then the future value is actually going to be equal to this $1,000 here. Hit F4 to lock that in. Oh, sorry, I skipped one thing, which was the payments. So let's add payments, which is just going to be equal to the 35 bucks over here. Hit F4. And let's close that. And we actually have to put a negative symbol right here uh, so that it doesn't come out as negative. And we find that the present value when the uh, interest rate is actually 6.25% is this value here. Now we can actually just con hit control C and paste formula. And that gives us our present value under each of these different uh, conditions. And so we should see that when the yield of maturity is 6%, our present value here matches what we calculated over here, which it does. And we can see when the interest rates in the market fall, the price increases, whereas if the interest rate increases, uh, the price actually falls. Now effective duration is basically gonna measure uh, these uh, changes. And so one thing I should say is that effective duration is usually used when a bond is really complex and let's say it has embedded options like it's a callable bond or a puttable bond. Um, it should come out with about the same value as the modified duration for a simple bond like this one, but we'll go ahead and calculate it anyways. So it'll be equal to the price in the down rate scenario minus the price in the up rate scenario divided by two times the change in yield which is this value that we put right here multiplied by that original price here and let's hit that and you can see that these two are close to the same however if we uh if we blow these values out we'll see if we keep going eventually we'll get to the point where they deviate but they're they're so close and one other thing i should mention is that um, the higher this change in yield is, the less accurate these calculations, uh, this calculation here actually will be. Well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe for more content just like it. If you want to get more complex with this calculations, we can, you can incorporate convexity and check out the video that I have on convexity, uh, here. Thanks for watching.